Last year, Brian and I compared two cameras, the Nikon Z50 to the Nikon Z5. So last year we got a good feel of the Z50. Uh, we found it to be a worthy camera for any entry level or enthusiast level photographer or indeed videographer. It's small, lightweight, fast, does what you expect from a modern mirrorless camera. So if it ain't broke, why did Nikon go back to the drawing board for the ZFC? Well, here's the thing. In a way, they haven't changed all that much. We really liked the Nikon Z50 and Nikon agreed with us. The updated FC model keeps the same 21 megapixel sensor, has no anti-aliasing filter, has the same viewfinder, the same 4K video settings, the same eye autofocus modes, and it does the same 11 frames per second burst mode. They both have focus stacking built in, and they're also both compatible with Nikon's new webcam software. So there are many similarities, but let's talk about some of the differences, starting with the screen. So a lot of people like having a fully articulating screen as it allows you to easily frame yourself if you're vlogging or indeed for showing clients work on the job. It's a handy feature and we're glad to see Nikon finally implement it in one of their Z series cameras. So if you like the Z50 but you were holding out for an articulating screen, then possibly this is a good option for you. The Z50 also uses a micro USB However, the FC uses the updated USB-C. Unfortunately, there's no built-in flash into the FC, whereas there is a pop-up flash in the Z50. However, to make up for it, they've increased the amount of shutter speed options in this camera. So this one can go down to 30 seconds, and then you go into bulb mode. Whereas this one, you can go all the way down to 900 seconds, and then you can go into bulb mode. So it just gives you a little bit more flexibility. So those are some key differences, and some are smaller and some are not so small, depending on how you use the camera. But obviously here, the main thing is the visual aesthetic design. This is a retro style camera, and that's gonna be the big selling point here. Yeah, so the really big takeaway uh, with this camera is the retro styling of it. So Nikon have kind of swapped out the typical black monochromatic leather effect cameras that nearly everyone has at this stage. Instead, they've pulled designs from the 80s. This is definitely a, a vintage inspired look, it has to be said. Uh, it really is appealing to anyone who enjoys more of a, a good aesthetic, or even if you're into to camera history. For me, a camera like this with all these knobs and dials is a great way to get back into that slightly filmic experience without actually having to go to the hassle of using film. It's tactile and it feels great in the hand, and you'll be sure to build up a strong muscle memory while using it. Personally, I'm a fan of camera companies taking a bit of a risk when it comes to design, and I'm really glad to see Nikon trying something new. The only downside is the lack of that grip. The grip which you find in the Z50 is really chunky and helps your camera to feel secure and firm in your hand, so it's worth picking up both cameras and seeing which one is right for you. That being said, there is an additional accessory that will provide you with a grip on the side, so that's worth considering. So ultimately, unless you really need an articulating screen, uh, a grip, or maybe even the flash, uh, I don't think you'd be making a bad decision in going with either of these cameras. But if you enjoy the finer things in life and you want a funky camera to pair with your long beard and your granddad's glasses, the Nikon ZFC is definitely one to try out for size. But what does the ZFC stand for? Funky camera? Flippin' class. A fantabulous contraption. <laughs>